Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is Corsair's IQ H100i RGB Pro XT all-in-one cooler. This is an unboxing video to talk to you about this cooler, how it works, how you set it up and install it, and what it's like to go through that process. And I'm gonna show you it fully installed at the end of this video. Now, this is an RGB cooler, but it's worth noting, as you can see from the box itself, that it comes with ML fans, not RGB fans. So it is the cooler itself, the bit that sits on the CPU, the heat sink that has RGB lighting on it. And that works with Corsair's IQ software. During this video, I am going to show you how to replace the standard fans with Corsair's QL120 fans to give it a look and feel upgrade and then add some more RGB to it. Now this cooler is interesting because it works with numerous CPUs that includes both Intel and AMD and a multitude of sockets. For example, it includes Intel's LGA 1150, 1151, 1155, 1156, 1366, 2011, loads and loads, and loads of AMD ones as well. And it has instructions for installing those and all the screws and everything you need as well as back plates. In the box you get the two standard fans, as I said, the AIO, that's the radiator, and the heat sink, the pump and everything, all in one, and a USB cable that needs to connect to the USB port on your motherboard, a number of different back plates, and a load of screws, so it comes with like 16 long screws, multiple different standoffs, uh, kits for the various things with the other AMD or Intel. You can see the different backplates here. For my CPU, I didn't actually have to install any backplates. So like modern Intel CPUs, the motherboards don't even need, need a backplate. So you can see a load of them here, but actually I didn't even need to install them on mine. You just need to screw on some standoff screws, then uh, put the housing on and then screw that down with a thumb screw. Dead easy. So you might find it's really easy to install on yours depending on what model you've got. Now the standard fans connect directly to the pump itself via one single cable and I'll show you that a bit later on. Essentially it makes it really easy installation process. You mount the fans onto the radiator and Corsair recommends mounting them so that you're pulling cold air into the case. So you're pulling cold air across the radiator into the case and then it cools the radiator down, keeps the all-in-one cooler running cool, cooling your CPU off. And uh, that means that you have to put them face down when you're installing, and I'll show you that as I go through. One of the highlights to these all-in-one coolers is that it comes with your thermal paste pre-applied, so you don't need to worry about that. Now here you can see the connection coming out of the pump itself. On the left, on my left of my hand, you'll see two cables, that's the power cable. The little tiny one next to the SATA power, that plugs into the CPU fan pump header on your motherboard and then you need SATA power from your PSU. It is actually a really easy installation process. If you've always wanted liquid cooling but haven't got the guts to do it yourself, this is one of the easy ways to do it because it's all in one, there's no danger of any spillage and it's basically a pretty easy setup process. The standard fans you'll see here now, you need to install them as I said face down so you want this front facing bit facing down. Once you've got that installed you can then plug them directly into the pump and then plug the pump into the uh, motherboard via the USB cable and the power and then basically both your motherboard and uh, Corsair's IQ software can then control the entire thing, making sure that your CPU is cooled sufficiently. Here you'll see the Corsair logo and the ring around that has RGB lighting in it. On the side you'll see the little micro USB input there, that's where you need to plug in that USB cable before you plug it into your motherboard. Here you can see a close-up of the heatsink itself, that's what sits over your CPU and you'll note the grey bit in the middle is the thermal paste that's pre-applied. So one bit of contention with everybody on the web is how much thermal paste you need to use when installing a heat sink on your CPU. With this cooler, you don't need to worry about that. The thermal paste is already there with just the perfect amount. So you just need to plunk it on top of your CPU, screw it down and you're away. 
yeah, it makes life a hell of a lot easier because you don't need to worry about whether you put too much on or not enough on and it's great. Here you can see one of the back plates. You'll note it has a 3M sticker on it so you can peel that off, push it through and stick it down. Now I'm not going to talk through how to install each of these back plates because there are instructions included in the box that make it really easy and you'll find out depending on which socket CPU you have which one you need to use. Here you can see a close-up of the radiator, that's where you need to mount the fan. You can see the little screw holes. These are a point of contention with me, which I'll get into a bit later on. And the one downside to this cooler that I've found with regularly with Corsair all-in-one coolers is installing the fans is a pain. And I'll show you why a bit later on. However, the product itself is otherwise fantastic. Please excuse the thumb marks. Apparently I've got sticky hands and it looks really great once installed and you'll see that at the end but it also is a very premium product i've been using these for years and i found them that they run really quiet and keep your cpu running optimally without much fuss at all they look great they work really well and they're reasonably affordable as i said you can upgrade them to make them more rgb as well so this one is known as RGB but doesn't actually include much RGB on it as standard, it's just the pump but you can upgrade it with LR120s or QL120s if you so wish and I'm going to show you the process of doing that but first I'm going to start by showing you the process of installing the standard fans that come with it you need to make sure you mount them the right way around and I actually did it the wrong way around here um, what I want to do is not only mount them so they're pulling cold air into the case, which I have done correctly here, so the front faces what will be the top of my case. Um, you also want to mount them so that the cables face the back of your case so you can then feed the cables back through into the back of your case and put, uh, plug them into the right bits. I unfortunately somehow managed to do it the wrong way around so they should be the other way around <laughs> i fixed that later on i just wanted to demonstrate you need to think about this how where you're going to mount the cooler and how that's going to sit now you can see here a problem i have with these is if you look through the screw holes you can actually see the fins of the radiators don't actually space out properly so in order to get the fans on you really need a lot of pressure and force to get those pins in and pushed out of the way and get the screws in there and push those little slats out of the way nightmare took me ages got a load of blisters doing it i took the standard fans off and installed the ql 120s that you can see here so these are rgb capable fans which means that once it's all plugged in you then have full rgb light instead of just the pump head it's a bit of an expensive upgrade but it does make the cooler look that much more special and I will show you what that looks like at the end. But as you can see here, those fans look much nicer as standard anyway. You'll note, for example, they have extra rubber anti-vibration mounts to keep them running quieter. And they also have a lot more RGB lighting on them. Well, standard fans have not, so <laughs> they have a much nicer looking premium design to them that gives you a lot more RGB lighting in it. Well, glorious from all angles, although that doesn't really matter too much on these fans but the point is here because the QL 120s are lit on both sides it means that you can have them set intake in this way and still make the most of it you'll also note in the center you have a nice brushed aluminium style swirled Corsair logo uh, that looks really nice when it's installed on the case too here you can quickly see on the left ML 120s which is the standard fans that come with the case QL 120s and then the LL 120s which is slightly cheaper but they're not lit on both sides in the same way as the QL 120s. So the QL 120 you can see here outside of the case and it gets glorious lighting because it has 34 individually addressable RGBs. Now I will include a link to a separate video that I've done on these fans and unboxing and showing them off and talking a bit more depth about them. Uh, you don't need to install them, it's not necessary, you can just use the cooler with the standard fans but I just wanted to show off what it looked like with them because I thought I was doing it and you might be interested too and it's another upgrade. It does make things a bit trickier though if this is the first time you're installing cool like this you might want to just stick with the standard fans because these RGB fans require two cables whereas the standard fans only have one. 
Here you can see problems I had with the radiator mounting it again. Problems mounting the radiator to the back plate took ages to get those screws in. Again, the same issue here. The fins between the screw holes are just not very well done and it's very difficult to get the screws in. The process for installing it once you've already got it all in is nice and easy though. As I said, the heatsink itself it just plops down on top of your CPU. You need to put some standoff screws on around the edges, put that down on top, and then thumb screws to tighten it in place. Once you've done that, there's a USB cable that connects micro USB and then it goes to the USB header on your motherboard. So you need to find that from your motherboard manual. Uh, in this case, I've fed the USB cable around the back and then out the bottom at the rear because I've got uh, USB ports on the bottom of my motherboard, I'll just feed them into that. Another alternative, which I did previously, is you can actually run that into a Commander Pro if you're using one of those, that's another way of doing it, and then that into the USB header. As I said, with the standard fans, all you need to do is to connect the power from the fans to the pump head, and then the pump head connects to your CPU fan header on the motherboard and then a SATA power. For the RGB fans you need to install the lighting node core and connect the RGB fan cables to that. Here you can see the power cables that I was talking about from the pump header so you can connect the power cables for both the QL120s and the standard fans directly to the CPU and that allows the motherboard to then work out how much power those fans need to keep the radiator cool so it's a good way to connect those power cables that way and then connect the SATA power from the pump head to your PSU. Here you can see the lighting node core that comes with the QR120s so you need to connect them in order, connect the cable that says to RGB hub uh, to that box. That box then connects to SATA power and to a USB port on your motherboard, or in my case, to the Commander Pro and then to the motherboard. And I had two of these lighting I cores because I've got eight QL120 fans in my case, and then they are uh, six of those are then powered from the Commander Pro, two of them from the CPU pump, and then this is the end result. You can see the radiator mounted on the top. It's a 240mm radiator, so it fits nice on the top of this case. If you had a 360, you could probably mount it to the front, but the end result is magnificent. Let me know if you have any comments or questions. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, or hilarious. Be sure to subscribe and check out these other videos, as well as taking a look in the description for links and Ember information you might find useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything you'd like to see extra about this. And have a great life.